morning uh, so we were trying to talk about the criteria for bubble formation and also we will uh, today we will complete the whole process of how a bubble is formed and what happens to a bubble when it is formed and how it leaves the surface and what happens after it leaves the surface what happens to the surrounding fluid there so one of the few things that uh, we need to talk about is a model by Y Y Su. This is a first of its kind model in 1962. This is a journal of heat transfer paper and it is the first of its kind therefore, it is a very simple model. So, I will just try to give you the reference for that on size range of active nucleation sites on a heated uh, heating surface journal of heat transfer volume 84 page number 207 to 213 year 1962. So, if you get a chance from somewhere please I the last time I checked when I taught this the first time it was not there. So, the it from 1960? Oh, okay, then fine. If you get it, please let me know. Okay, if you get it, please, uh, then I would like to give a copy of this to class because YY Su, I have a 1964 paper which is on something else. So, this is 1962 and the name is on the size range of active nucleation. cavities on a heating surface. Okay, so this is the one which uh, we will try to see. So, couple of uh, small term terminologies which you might come across. One is called as ebullition cycle. Ebullition cycle. This is nothing but the cycle of growth and release of bubbles at a nucleation site. This is called as ebullition cycle. By the way, this whole uh, whatever we are covering today is given best whatever level of understanding in carry section 6.3 okay so uh, he gives a lot of text we'll we'll talk through that with a few additional diagrams but uh, fundamentally it is from carry's textbook now what is this ebullition cycle? It is nothing but as we said, when I have a surface and when I have a cavity, we have talked about it several times. This is wall temperature greater than T sat. This is the cavity. Not all cavities will be nucleation sites, so on and so forth. When a cavity is ready and there is a nucleation which is happening at the mouth of the cavity. So, there is a time period associated with the process of nucleation. So, let us just call it T1. Okay, so the time this is essentially time taken for the fluid at say T infinity or something slightly greater than T infinity to reach. T sat and start to nucleate. By that I mean it is ready to start to have a shape which looks like a bubble. Okay, so till this happens, the liquid will not form a uh, the site will not you will not see any nucleation on the site. You would see activities and you will not see, you will be, uh, it will be silent, 
there will be no activity, but what is happening is at that time the fluid is getting heated progressively by transient conduction and things are being conditions are being made ready for any kind of nucleation to occur. So, this is the first time this is also called as the waiting period because apparently there is no activity there on the surface. So, this is called as the waiting period and then so T wait another time T 2 I am just calling it T 1 and T 2 there is no specific reason why it is called so. So, T 1 is this T 2 is the time that the process takes when the nucleation first starts to appear ok. So, all the conditions are now favorable the surface is now at T wall greater than T sat and you had some entrapped air which is also expanding and uh, heat transfer from the from the interface is feeding vapor into the uh, embryo and the embryo is starting to be ready for nucleation. So, the, the bubble starts to grow and you tend to see what is happening as a uh, macroscopic phenomenon ok. So, the time taken for this whole process of nucleation just after nucleation beginning plus growth of the bubble that means its diameter is growing 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 as you would see it is taking a shape like this taking a shape like this remember at a given instant of time at a given instant of time there exists a, a boundary layer the fluid could be at whatever uh, location from the uh, heated surface but there exists a delta T thermal boundary layer up to which the effect of wall is felt agreed. So, that means if if this is the I should not put this free surface the free surface could be somewhere here ok. So, at a given instant of time the penetration of the heat from this surface has been felt up to a layer which is at a location delta T this is called as a thermal thermal boundary layer all of us know from external flow it is essentially the region up to which you see uh, whatever T minus T uh, infinity by T wall minus T infinity is 0.9 and similar logic that is the locus of points up to which the presence of the heated surface is felt that is called as the, the thermal boundary layer ok. So, this green line represents that so called thermal boundary layer that we are talking about. Why should the I, am, I was just going to come to that. We have already told it at several times. See, this figure. Let me draw it completely. You'll you'll realize. See, if, if the if the if the thermal boundary layer was at some location here, okay, the bubble would what the surrounding medium would not be conducive enough. The energy content of that medium. See, we have to have T wall greater than T sat. Okay, that is happening right when T wall is, is equal to T sat you do not see activity of nucleation because of whatever we have studied ok. It has to go through a metastable. If, if the surrounding liquid if say the thermal boundary layer is somewhere here ok. The bubble if it is tried to come to the surface for example, it will collapse because it is encountering a uh, a layer of fluid which is below T sat. See T this is the, the surrounding fluid needs to be at least at T sat or greater than T sat ok for the bubble to sustain itself. Why? Because if the bubble is growing and it encounters a colder sheet of liquid the bubble will instead of energy going from the surrounding fluid into the bubble for formation of vapor, the energy will go from higher temperature to lower temperature in which case it is the bubble to the surrounding. Therefore, the bubble will condense will collapse since that all that is all that is happening in the time T 1 where it is it is probably trying to do, but we are not able to see it it is not having enough energy. So, the moment it starts to see come out through the 
uh, surface that is what we are observing and that is what we call as a look time when nucleation has begun. Otherwise nucleation or any phenomena whatever activity is happening silently it is a preparation time. At that time even though the bubble might by uh, the, even though the conditions may be conducive locally for uh, or I should not say locally at that nucleation site even though uh, at the wall region near the wall conditions may be conducive for the growth surrounding is not yet ready for it. So, the surrounding needs to be able to appreciate the bubble and it needs to be able to take the bubble otherwise it is entering into a hostile environment ok. So, when T wall is greater than T sat and this nucleation will grow until the bubble the force balance between the buoyancy forces and the inertia forces is such that the bubble will leave the surface ok. So, it cannot grow infinitely ok it, the bubble will not keep growing infinitely it it can grow up to a location where the boundary layer is such that it is uh, meeting a condensing uh, or a lower temperature liquid or depending on as you see with increase in time the boundary layer location will shift upwards. So, initially the bubble may just collapse later on what will happen is when it gets when it is able to sustain itself and grow the boundary layer may be somewhere here the bubble may grow up to this point and will, will have enough buoyancy to leave the surface. What happens after that whether it condenses or reaches the free surface that is not of concern at this point. But the bubble has physically left the surface and that time that is from nucleation beginning to growth and departure from the site. This is the other time T1 plus T2 and the frequency of bubble formation is obviously 1 over T1 plus T2 correct. So, now with see this is at a given instant see we have to see uh, it gets a little confusing and uh, from visualization as well as interpretation point of view there are two ways of looking at it. One is you look at a surface at a given time that is that is what we are doing here. I look at the same surface over a range of time which is what is normally done to understand the full phenomena or you can look at the whole whole surface heated surface at a given instant of time which, which means you will see site 1 active, site 2 not active, site 3 already bubbles coming out, site 4 no activity. That is what will happen in a real life experiment when you are boiling water for tea you will see you are observing the whole heated surface at a given instant of time. So, site 1 could be ready for nucleation, site 2 would have already nucleated, 3 and 4 you might not even know where the sites are ok. So, we are doing right now a given nucleation site at a given instant of time which means the boundary layer location is here which means this time T1 and T2 are kind of fixed for that instant of time ok. Now, as I supply more heat, if I supply more heat the temperature this gradient is I mean the, the, the temperature would be such that the heat propagates further into the uh, fluid and the boundary layer would be somewhere here. So, when the what I am trying to tell you is about this frequency we will come back to that. Uh, yes, yeah. Okay. Yes, I am just coming to that. The frequency is not constant which is what I will I am trying to tell you now. So, what happens a very simplified diagram at a surface again these are just idealizations to make us understand ok a very complex phenomena. So, when this is the heated surface this is at T wall greater than T sat the bubble has just left the surface. So, let us say this is the bubble which has left the surface. So, it takes away certain amount of surrounding fluid with it. So, if I were to draw a very crude view of what is happening at the surface, I would have any this is as simple as simplified as we can make it. So, the fluid is there, this is the fluid layer, momentarily the bubble has gone, it has sheared through this layer and taken the fluid out of it. So, what is happening? 
the surrounding fluid is now going to come and occupy this space. That surrounding fluid is I am just calling it T cold which may be equal to T infinity. T infinity we can assume to be constant or increasing with respect to time which is what will happen in real life. T infinity is the bulk mean temperature. So, water in the pool temperature keeps increasing as I supply heat with increase in time. Okay. Whatever it is when T infinity is below T sat which would be the case the initial part waiting period this would give rise to waiting period. Okay. This the fluid when it comes here it will again go through the whole process of transient conduction by which it will start to get heated, its temperature will rise, it will condition at the site will become locally flavorable for nucleation and it will go through the same process again. So, this T1 waiting period is not a constant or I do not want to write T1, I will write T waiting now because we know the word for it is not a constant. So, as T bulk or T infinity increases, as T infinity increases, time taken for site, the same site. Okay, we are talking of the same given nucleation site, same site to nucleate is reduced. So, as a function of time, it is kind of funny when we write this, as a function of time, T1 is a decrease, decreasing function of time as T increases. Okay. This is the physical time, this is the waiting period and this is commonsensical, logical only, nothing, no, no great, uh, nothing great difficult about it. So, the fluid has taken away energy, colder fluid is replacing it, the colder fluid has become hotter and hotter with respect to time. So, with each subsequent bubble leaving, the colder fluid which is coming is slightly warmer, therefore, the residence time is slightly reduced, therefore, the bubble frequency would increase, which means you are going to see bubbles at a faster rate with increase in time and all of us have observed this in real life. So, there is nothing uh, difficult or uh, for fancy about it. Okay. So, this is something which you keep, you need to know. So, if I write the steps which Sue postulated, first process small embryo exists in the cavity. So, this is not a cavity which is flooded, flooded as we say, as we said last time where the cavity is completely filled with water. So, we are talking of cavities which are going to have uh, air or entrapped air or gas in it. Okay. The small embryo exists in a cavity. He says that bubble will be formed, I will just explain this, let me write this first, Bomb formed from the residual part of previous bubble. This is nothing but this, this activity. The old bubble has gone, okay. the new fluid which is coming in, there is the surrounding fluid which is already hotter and this fluid which is coming in is colder, this is the residue which he is talking about, nothing, no great, it is just given a name for it, residual part of the previous bubble. Then this is all hypothesis, okay. physical process, transient conduction, uh, he calls it transient heat transfer, we will we'll give it transient conduction or diffusion in the region. leading to T wait, waiting period, leading to waiting period, okay. 
and what Sue also said that the boundary layer, ther thermal boundary layer is, is thin, therefore conduction is the primary dominant mode of heat transfer. You can have turbulence etc. outside, but in the boundary layer conduction alone is fine. Okay, this is the first model of its kind, so it is a reasonably good assumption. So, primary mode of heat transfer in the direction perpendicular to the heated surface. So, this were the hypothesis or steps which Sue postulated, why, why Sue, okay. okay. Now, I will draw a, uh, the explanation from last class still remains, I know that, I will come to that. Having talked about waiting period, we will try to draw a graph which is there in most classical textbooks. And since we are talking up a, about a single nucleation site, let us do that first. So, I am going to draw two graphs, one below the other. This is one. And please, when I ask you to draw diagrams in the exam or the quiz, please do not draw microscopic figures. You have, you will finish your exam in 3 pages and have 9 pages left which anyway will go as waste. So, please draw reasonably good diagrams. This is bubble diameter. This is T wall which is shown here, bubble diameter is shown here. This is time here. So, I just change this this way for ease of drawing for me, no other reason. So, I have one, uh, roughly this distance between the axis and the first green line should be what it is here or slightly lower, it cannot be higher, okay. Do not make this distance larger than this, okay, because that is non-physical. So, this is T is equal to 0, we will call that as T equal to 0, this is equal to T 1, this period is called waiting period, this period I will write outside, period of rapid bubble growth and we will draw the graph now as let me finish and then you draw that way if there are any mistakes you do you do not translate that. This is the point of bubble detachment. This one here on the left hand side and this one are both points of bubble detachment, okay. So, this is the bubble diameter story. The wall temperature goes this way.
this one. Okay, so this is what you have. Okay, you can draw this now. Once you are finished drawing, I'll have to give you a few points. So, this is okay. So, you are responsible for this diagram, okay, and the explanation about behavior at a nucleation site. So, if I tell you you are responsible, that means you are responsible, you will see it in some form somewhere. So, we know that after a bubble is detached from a surface. So, this is where bubble gets detached, okay. So, that means from at that location. So, we are talking at a given location. This is where the bubble is detached. So, the diameter essentially becomes 0, okay. The activity is all silent. You do not see anything which is where this is called as the waiting period, okay. At that time, we say things are silent, but things are not silent. The wall temperature increases, which means the fluid temperature associated with the wall also increases. Mind you, these time scales are very, very small, okay. They are not of the order of seconds, they are of the order of milliseconds. And then once the conditions are active for this to happen, the bubble to nucleate, then you see a portion of rapid bubble growth and then uh, finally, bubble detachment will occur. In this time, the wall temperature will suddenly drop during the period of rapid bubble growth because the energy that is taken by the bubble to start forming. So, we will put those things in words that will be clear for you. So, I, after a bubble is detached from a site, there is a waiting period until the bubble attains critical conditions. Waiting period after a bubble detachment from one site, there is a waiting period until bubble nucleus achieves critical condition. This is the first point. Once critical condition is reached, that is T1, T is equal to T1, bubble grows rapidly, okay, the bubble grows very rapidly, pushes, pushes the superheated liquid. So, as it is growing, you can imagine it is starting to grow. So, as it is growing, the liquid which is surrounding it has to get pushed away. That is what it is trying to do. So, it pushes the superheated liquid away from the heated surface, from the surface. leaving a micro layer, there we get to micro of fluid adhering to the surface below the bubble. the surface below the bubble. This micro layer third point is rapidly vaporized. You need me to, here I am just flashing this again, just take a look. Once the critical condition is reached, bubble grows rapidly it pushes the superheated liquid from the surface leaving a micro layer of fluid adhering to the surface below the bubble. So, essentially it is when it does this, this portion in contact here is that micro layer which you are talking about. Blow up diagram, let me just try to draw this for you. So, 
doing something like this. This is the surface. This green here would be the so called micro layer. Okay. Micro layer is rapidly vaporized. Therefore, rapid heat removal from surface, therefore T wall drops. So once micro layer gets evaporated, buoyancy force Till here inertial force will hold the bubble to the surface. So inertial force holds the bubble. Once the micro layer is evaporated, it is feeding the vapor to the bubble core. Therefore, the buoyancy forces dominate and bubble gets detached from the surface. This is a very crude, simple, easy to understand phenomenon. Real life is not so straightforward. A lot of activities, there will be turbulence, there will be a lot of other activities, but by and large, if you take a look, this is what is going to happen. Okay. See a questioning look on your face, Sylee. The bubble will retain, will try to remain there. Okay, once once the size doesn't become too large, this how come force balance, buoyancy, inertial forces are what are acting on the bubble. So inertia. What do you mean by inertia? The physical dimension of the bubble. So when I have a particular, what is inertia? Ability to stay there. So what is staying there? The bubble. So when the bubble is of a particular dimension, it has a particular inertia associated with it. Okay, the buoyancy force, buoyancy is essentially because of the presence of the air or vapor inside the bubble, it starts to become lighter. So when the inertial force which is present because of the physical size of the bubble, that is holding it together compared to the buoyancy force which is small. When the buoyancy force starts to become large because of vapor formation, this would overcome the inertial force and the bubble will detach from the surface. Yes, Ash. Huh? That also will try to hold the bubble. So you have surface tension, you have inertia, you have the uh, uh, buoyancy. The surface tension is kind of constant. Okay, you have. The only the dimension is increasing, the angle with which it is going to be there is going to be the same. So surface tension force, actually really speaking, surface tension plus inertia is going to hold and then you depart because of the uh, uh, increase in the buoyancy force compared to the uh, other two. Yeah, Ashish, this one? Mm. So this is where the micro layer evaporation is happening. That is what there is, nothing else. This portion is where the micro layer evaporation is happening because so much amount of energy is removed at in such a small amount of time the wall temperature drops. This is not some 15, 20 degree drop or something, it is a drop that is all we are trying to say. Yes, what is the initial time? T is equal to 0 is initial time. Huh. When bubble is detaching, I didn't hear this. The temperature has to be. Why? It will. No, no, no. That is what. No. So that is. See. Uh, okay. The instant when the bubble has detached, uh, this is where the bubble has detached. That is why you see a decrease in the wall temperature here. So this probably the slope is not uh, correct. Okay. I mean the the value is not right, but the wall temp the as the diameter goes down the initially the uh, 
what do you say the, the liquid is uncovered from there right then the cold water comes in and th then this is what is happening after that which one T is equal to 0 is essentially the minima ok the which one this one this is this is a history from the previous cycle. See, uh, Baba. Okay, 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 okay. okay. I, th I think this is this is this is what this is at this point A and B are the same in terms of their physical this one. So it should not be like this. So, but when when you are talking of the first bubble, then this is what it is. Okay, I think the books give it that way. Actually, fine. If you are talking of uh, one bubble which is already left and another bubble is coming, you will see this sawtooth only. Uh, this portion T equal to 0 physically represents the first nucleation that has happened from the side. Probably that is why this is shown this way. Okay. So, uh, you can you can forget this part because if you are talking of a series of nucleation at a given site, it is essentially a mirror uh, uh, sawtooth mirror image of each of these profiles. So, you will see. When no, 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 bubble nucleation has started to happen and because it has started to happen, imagine a balloon which is which is being inflated, it cannot expand in the downward direction, uh, J. So, there is a solid surface, I am filling the balloon, okay, and it is trying to grow. The, it is prevented at this solid surface to expand in the downward direction. It would, it would ideally balloon would go like a sphere. Right? But when there is a con constraining surface here, it would grow something like this. Okay? So, it is pushing away that liquid in the process. Yeah? Micro layer evaporates between the period the bubble has started to form and it reaches a, yeah, it is going between this, this small time period T1 to whatever T2. I didn't write that T1 to T2, it is small infinitesimal time. Yeah, something like that. So, what is that scale of it? It is a very, very small time scale, but because of that, there is a sudden drop in the wall temperature and rapid rise in the bubble. Because if you see the surrounding fluid also contributes, we will, we will see this mechanism and this micro layer evaporation, these are all postulated mechanisms of uh, bubble growth. So, they are saying is that it is coming from the bottom. So, something from the bottom has to get evaporated for the bubble to grow. That is what is this layer of fluid. So, when, when the bubble is formed, it does not make the surface bone dry. They, it leaves the fluid as it is trying to rise. Okay, There is obviously, it is a gas liquid interface which is blooming. So, as it, uh, as it grows, bad diagram. So, as it grows, it does this. Next time, it will do this. If there was no solid surface protecting it, it would have completed a curve like this, right. That is not possible because the presence of the solid surface. So, it will, it will do this. And when it does that, this region be between the green and the red is where it traps in certain amount of liquid. Okay. That liquid when I am giving heat from the solid surface is going to evaporate and feed into that. Subsequently, this growth is also fueled by phase change at the interface. Okay. So, both of these are causing the bubble to rise. The wall temperature, pardon me? Yeah, that is the reason they again they postulate. So, which whose contribution is what, how much is not not explicitly known, but this apparently causes because this is happening at a uh, this is happening at the heated surface because so much heat is removed in phase change. Q double prime is equal to m dot hfg or m whatever m dot double prime hfg. This is a large quantity, and since this is equal to h delta t you would see a sharp reduction in T wall, that is what is happening. So, this is, this 
the the surrounding fluid uh, causing the volume to increase is always there additional part here is what is like pumping the bubble to grow very quickly that is what this is this is not postulated by su this is one of the models which people have hypothesized there are several theories which are there su's model we have not uh, this one su's model is a uh, analytic uh see i'll just tell you there are people say uh, evaporation micro layer evaporation bulk evaporation thermal boundary layer stripping which anyway happens and uh, bubble agitation so turbulence also causes an increase in heat transfer so these are the few logically speaking uh, existing phenomena so the when a bubble leaves it strips the thermal boundary layer so when a new boundary layer is formed whatever we saw is happening that also causes an increase in heat transfer and then because the bubble is agitating as it flows through it it increases the turbulence in the so called uh, boundary layer region which otherwise was quiescent therefore there is an enhancement of heat transfer so principal heat transfer mechanisms if you see in uh, because of uh, nucleation are primarily is this growth of the bubble which causes the bulk of the h increase that is micro layer evaporation and er evaporation from the surrounding fluid in addition to that people say turbulence and bubble agitation which is going to be there and uh, the boundary layer stripping as in our uh, simple ug heat transfer also when you see the boundary layer is a resistance to heat transfer so if i strip the boundary layer and allow and allow it to form again i am locally enhancing the heat transfer the flow or a flat plate or anything huh? so same logic people are using so see all these are going to contribute how much fraction each one contributes which see when you try to model these phenomena i told you this uh, in the beginning of the course also so if i have to model something heat is flowing from the surface all i know is q double prime into a heat flux and if i have liquid here and vapor here what goes into sensible heating of the liquid what goes into sensible heating of the vapor what goes into conversion from liquid to vapor what goes to radiation 100 is equal to a plus b plus c plus d plus whatever i can make 10 components for writing i can do whatever i want but then how accurately i am modeling these will give me the correct temperature profile will give me the correct velocity distribution so on and so forth so i might as well do three or four logically occurring processes neglecting a few but give a reasonable physical explanation and physical understanding of the process so that these components are correctly characterized not randomly characterized so primarily i think people have arrived at a consensus that these could be the primary ones most important being evaporation and this micro layer business other things are going to cause enhancement of the heat transfer that is not happening because of the bubble which is formed at the surface it is happening because the bubble has left the surface so from the surface what is because bubble formation at a surface that is evaporation and uh, micro layer evaporation as the bubble grows as it flows out surrounding fluid also contributes and also there is enhancement because of turbulence and agitation so these are all going to be there once the bubble has left the surface but until the bubble leaves the surface the increase in heat transfer that you get because of a phase change is primarily because of what we are talking okay so this is necessary for a bubble to leave then only all this turbulence and all those things can happen so this is primary after that once the bubble is left the surface it will it it has left at this size at next location it has gone to a size slightly bigger than that that is because of surrounding fluid dumping energy into it if it is in a superheated environment if it goes into a subcooled environment it will collapse so and then as it moves it is not going to move in a logically straight direction so there is turbulence also and these are going to cause changes okay yes previous slide this one this one this okay ah uh, so, so okay 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 sorry 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 this is bubble is detached 
then immediately we go to this waiting period again. This, this, these are not, I should have put a line here and put it, sorry. This, this is essentially what this should be. See wall temperature, okay, wall temperature we will see to at the same instant as the bubble detaches you will see uh, cold fluid coming in. So, cold fluid coming in means the wall temperature has to uh, has to come down little bit, but again the heat transfer is starting to take place and so the, it, it will follow exactly the same uh, path. So, you would see this, 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 okay. So, thanks for bringing this out. This is essentially T is equal to physical T equal to 0, the first bubble which is formed. okay. So, as the cycle progresses, you would see a wall temperature uh, decrease, increase, decrease, increase also, okay. So, this is point of bubble detachment. This whole thing is one ebullition cycle. Oh, sorry, double L, I think. T I O L cycle. E B U L L I T I O L. Waiting period starts here, huh? He, this whole portion bubble is there, no? So there is nothing like waiting here. Oh, okay, okay. I, I think you are getting confused with my nomenclature. Sorry. This T1 and T2 have no correlation with this T1 and T2. Please, this I had wrote because I didn't find any other terminology here. This T1 is the waiting period. It happens to be the same. This T2 is some arbitrary time scale which I wanted to say, it has nothing to do with this T2, okay. Please, please do not get confused. This is the, uh, sorry here, I means I did not, I did not realize that I have, I was having a T1 and T2 here. So, this T2 is nothing to do with graph. T1 and T2, okay. Please. Why is the temperature decreasing? That is because of this micro layer evaporation. So, sudden increase in uh, removal of heat that is phase transformation, phase change occurring. So, when see when the bubble is formed, it is, it is a very small nucleus, it starts to grow. Okay. So, what is providing the feed for the bubble to grow? The surrounding environment which is the superheated liquid that we agree and also this the base which is the heated surface which is in contact with the bubble. So, as the bubble is growing, the bubble will, it will, it will start to become like a sphere. The, as it becomes like a sphere, it is constrained by a wall which will prevent it from expanding in the downward direction. So, there is a thin layer of fluid which is going to be there. So, as it expands, it will push the liquid more and more away. So, when the thin layer becomes so thin, which they call as a micro layer, heat transfer from the wall happens so rapidly that it gets converted to steam and there is a very, very uh, rapid increase in the heat transfer coefficient causing a reduction in the wall temperature. That is what this is. Again, it is not going to go below T sat or anything like that. Okay, please do not word of caution, highly everybody please listen here. This drop in temperature is not some 20 degrees or 30 degrees that it is going to cause the wall to become below T sat. No. All we are saying, remember when we told you, I, I had this, always it will remain greater than T sat and I, I do not know whether you guys recall this, but when we drew this, uh, uh, I do not have the graph here, we had this diagram of flow regimes and heat transfer in a vertical tube and we had this wall temperature goes like this. I said there will be a drop and then it will go like this, okay. This, this is where the first time things are happening, okay. So, a drop in the wall temperature is essentially the first time when you have nucleation like that we have indicated here in, in flow boiling. 
in pool boiling it is that it is going to happen at every bubble formation time, okay. What exactly is happening at? What exact? This T2, uh, what is the question? That micro layer evaporation has ended in between these two. Surrounding. So, this the so let me let me call this B1, B2, B3, okay. These are not drawn to scale. B1 to B2 is micro layer evaporation plus feeding of the vapor from the surrounding fluid also, okay. Please remember these time scales are very, very small, okay. This is the additional part which is there even after micro layer evaporation of then the curvature of this is probably even flatter than what is drawn. So, there is a see why should the bubble not come down here and uh, leave the surface here Yashraj? It is just drawn that is all. When the buoyancy forces become large enough compared to the inertial force, it could happen at this point, it could happen at this point, it could happen at this point, does not matter. It does not have to be such a large time for the bubble to leave the surface after the micro layer has evaporated. This is just the qualitative representation of what is happening. So, the time scales this T1 to T2 and T2 to this one is just incidental. It is not that it should it the, the bubble could have come out of the surface here, it could have come out here, it probably can even come out later, does not matter, okay. We are just giving you the possible mechanisms which govern the heat transfer and their consequence effect on the wall temperature. That is all we are trying to tell. One, one second. B, B2 to B2 to B3 bubble is growing, but buoyancy is not enough for it to overcome the inertial force. Yes, Ah. No, it is not drawn to scale as I said. So, please. So, this is this should be of the same level of curvature. There is no reason why it should be different. No? Okay, uh, a good diagram will be from what you see in the textbook. Okay. Yes, sir, that, uh, ah, I was expecting a question. Cool. After uh, bubble detaches in the lower diagram, after your bubble detaches point. Ah, second diagram? Yeah. Ah. yeah. So, after uh, if this cycle is to repeat, that bubble detachment temperature won't be when I repeat this cycle again. See uh, that A would not be for the next bubble. This temperature is going to be higher. Right? Uh, for the next bubble, come to the last point again. For the I would not come back to A per se. Yeah, but it will be higher. It will be high. Yeah, I would see. That is what I said. I did not clarify, and the book also doesn't clarify this physical this this line represents the first time nucleation is happening, okay. So, that is why you are seeing a, a, a curve which is coming from this, this direction, otherwise it is not going to be this way, huh? A and B are not the same point, A and B are not the same. All we are saying is A is the first time where uh, this is the so called waiting period is started when uh, things are all conducive for initial at for the first bubble to form waiting period is theoretically infinite, okay. When you start the heat transfer process all the way till the first bubble is formed that much time is needed which is called as a waiting period. So, we are saying is when I have this cycle completed what happens after first. So, I am taking a snapshot between two successive bubble formations at a site. So, actually this diagram should be modified. I will try to modify it and present it to you later. The book does not. Huh? A and ah, A and bubble detachment point will similar. What I am saying is you will see a reduction in the temperature. It, it will come down and then again go. Bubble detachment cold fluid is coming down no. So, the instantaneously it will come down, but it will be hotter than the previous times. So, uh, one bubble cycle if I say 
the wall temperature at the beginning of the first bubble cycle would be slightly lower than the wall temperature at the beginning of the second cycle, so on and so forth. But all of this would be higher than what is conducive for the physical process of bubble nucleation to happen. It would not be a stair graph, no, nothing, nothing would be a, yes, yes. So, I will, I will draw a better diagram, this is taken from a book, it is obviously not the best diagram, I, uh, because of the questions we are getting, I, I would think, let me just try to draw it, you can comment on it, think about it. So, it would be uh, one. I will draw for 2, okay, 1 minute. So, this is what bubble, okay. So, this is 1 cycle, is that right? Correct. So, this is um, rapid micro layer business, T wall, this is time, this is uh, uh, evaporation, this is waiting period. Let us A, B, C, D. Are these four clear? Okay. Now, what happens after D? Okay. What happens after D? It is going to come down instantly to a temperature which is slightly higher than A. Is cold fluid is coming? Oh, then, okay. So, put it put it this way. How does it matter? So, you will have that means if it does not come down instantly, you are going to have a local dry spot there, which he, he or some you had asked last time, or somebody asked CHF does not happen or what? Simultaneous mass conservation as, as this is going, nothing is preventing cold liquid from coming. So, it is instantaneous. So, if you are going to be really picky at a micro nano scale, time scale, not physical scale, you can plot this that it is going to be slightly deviated. But for all practical purposes, this is going to be slightly higher and you will start to see the same curve, okay. So, I think this is T at A is lower than T at E, that is probably the correct way to write it. Ashish is now okay, Collier is, No, I do not know, at least I do not know at this point of time, probably there are people who know it and who will be able to talk about it. So, the relative time scale, this we know that waiting period T w for the next cycle, T w cycle 1 is greater than T w cycle 2, okay. And this is T minus T cycle minus T weight, this is for lack of any better terminology, this is T weight and this is T cycle. T cycle minus T weight, that is the second part for cycle 1 versus How is, how are these going to compare? Because the total cycle time itself is now going to be shortened. So, it is very difficult to tell what is happening. So, T cycle 1 is that a correct statement? The whole cycle itself is longer initially and it starts to decrease. So, for me to compare this may be slightly difficult at this point right away. But eventually, yeah, this one, ah. thanks to all of your questions.
also ok. So, A and E I should have drawn the second cycle actually, but I did not uh, give it much thought. B and T B and T D there is no relation, there is no relation. See the nature of the curve is qualitative, all, all disclaimers. Uh, they gave in packet na, this plastic children should not be allowed to play with this plastic or popcorn should be taken out from the uh, <laughs> cover and put in the microwave like that I am going to say this is qualitative. The shape has no representation or with the real actual uh, curve that you will encounter. Uh, there is no relationship between T B and T D, there is nothing is known. Which one? Which, yeah, this whole curve is this whole cycle is just going to start to go up a little bit with time. Yeah, so I would see this whole shift and also becoming small. The it is it's going to compress as well as shift upward. Okay. Sheil is having a mighty laugh. I don't know why. Yeah, up till you get almost zero waiting period. So, what you see in your lab experiment of continuous bubble generation is zero waiting period. That means, what happens we we we, we said right that, that I am going to come to we should have finished this today, but does not matter. Your transient conduction is going to be so small that you would the bulk fluid is almost reached the condition that it is needed for nucleation to occur. So, when the uh, when the when the when the bubble has left the quote unquote cold fluid is actually hot fluid ready to nucleate ok. So, the waiting period is reduced and this whole process is almost to the naked eye instantaneous ok. This is not this has nothing to do with sub cool boiling madam ok. This has nothing to do with sub cool boiling we do we are not even talked about sub cool boiling. Sub cool boiling would be where the bubbles come out and get condensed right away ok. We are not talking about sub cool boiling. With time. Subcool boiling is a phenomena which you will see more and more in flow boiling because the flow is happening and the flow is taking away the I mean the, the, the chunk of fluid is being replaced by a new chunk which is at the same temperature because of steady state condition. So, do not bring subcool boiling. Ready? Two. But good, this 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 part is probably the hardest in terms of the fundamentals and needs to elicit so many questions. I'm glad. But after this, after today's lecture, it is all routine stuff. Okay, so we will now go to what we were covering last class. We had a series solution for uh, the nucleation temperature uh, temperature distribution in the uh, boundary layer. So this is seventeen. We had a diagram, this is taken from Carey. What I took this diagram is from Collier's textbook, it is there in all textbooks by the way. So, if I thermal boundary layer delta T the temperature profile they are calling this T infinity it is assumed to be linear inside the boundary layer. So, if I just draw the diagram I have made a mess in the diagram here. So, this is the edge of the thermal boundary layer this is the temperature profile this is the y coordinate line is not horizontal sorry about that. This is two times r subscript e this is y I am just writing this here y equal to b is equal to 2 times r subscript c which is approximately equal to 1.6 r e. ok. Now, what is r e etcetera I will tell you r c cavity mouth radius 
okay re is basically the maximum uh, if this is the cavity this is 2r and this is your rc which is slightly different from each other okay anything else t wall greater than t sat y coordinate shown there okay so now we will so first assumption here is linear temperature distribution in thermal boundary layer second within the thermal boundary layer heat transfer is by diffusion alone the surrounding layer may be turbulent there can be convection doesn't matter rc is the cavity mouth radius b is height of the bubble above surface re is the bubble embryo okay so cavity radius and the bubble embryo radius in most situations would be different it can be the same in some situations so let us not go into the nitty gritty of it this comes from some mathematical analysis and approximation so you just take this right away so don't no questions on this this 2 y or b is equal to 1.6 re comes by some analysis okay although other assumptions this we have already told again i am saying although delta t is a function of time for the analysis delta t is fixed that means we do this analysis for a fixed delta t this is not moving otherwise it's a moving problem where things become slightly more complicated t wall is assumed constant and greater than t sat that also is because if I keep controlling this and keep increasing that wall temperature, then things will be a little bit more complicated. Within the thermal boundary layer, heat transfer is by diffusion alone. You can put within bracket one dimensional only in y direction instead of writing it separately, one dimensional in the y direction. One. 2, 3, 4. Okay, and we also gave a series solution to this uh, 1D transient heat conduction problem. This is delta theta by delta T is equal to alpha L uh, dou square theta by dou y square, uh, where theta is equal to T minus T infinity. And we wrote three boundary condition. We also wrote a series solution from this is from Carslow and Yeager. Comes out to be theta by theta wall is equal to delta t minus y by delta t plus 2 by pi summation n is equal to 1 to infinity cos n pi divided by n sin within bracket n pi I have written this last time you need not write this again e to the minus n squared pi squared uh, within bracket alpha l t by delta t squared this term for those of you who are not able to see is alpha l 
t square uh, sorry alpha l t by delta t square okay this is what it is okay and we said we would like to plot this in a non dimensional manner t minus t infinity divided by t wall minus t infinity all of us know how to do this from conduction heat transfer this y by delta t this goes from 0 to 1 this goes from 0 to 1. This is a log scale if I remember right, let me just cross check, this is a log scale, this is a linear scale, something else is a log scale, 0 0.8, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.6, and at time t equal to infinity which is your steady state solution this is steady state temperature distribution so i will see curves which look and with increasing time it is going to appear like this ok. Now where does this come in our analysis of the bubble equilibrium business? It comes from a very very simple formulation we had last time we said T delta T superheat was proportional to 1 by Okay, I will, we will not have time to full, full, I mean do this fully, but I will tell you what this curve, the delta T versus R curve would be a rectangular hyperbola. So that Y by delta T is again a length scale. So R also is physical dimension in the Y direction only. So I am drawing this with black color. You. it coincidentally has touched this curve, you could draw it without even touching this blue curve, okay, does not matter. What I am trying to tell you is, this one of the blue lines is, appears like a tangent, but there could be another line which is going to intersect. So, I should have drawn the general business actually. Okay, the black curve is bubble equilibrium curve. Okay, we have, we will have another plot for it also later on. So, what it tells me here is that when the solution for these two equations, the temperature profile and the bubble equation, this, this delta T is some T wall minus T sat. The T wall minus T sat, but that also will be related to T minus T sat. So, when the temperature is such that it is conducive for nucleation at a particular site, that particular site will be nucleated. So, the minimum, the first point of tangency is that first criteria, first uh, location at which things will start to be active. So, I can have this bubble equilibrium curve be a tangent or intersect the temperature distribution curve. So, it will be tangent to one of the temperature lines, it would intersect several other temperature lines at two points, is that right? So, this is a curve, I can have one, one curve intersecting here, another curve intersecting here, one curve exactly here, tangent. These are all temperature profiles, right? So, what we are trying to say uh, is that this is one, this is another, 
this is third. So, 1, 2, 3, okay. So, when I look at this, this represents two points of intersection or two solution, which means I can have a range of cavity sizes between R min and R max. Please listen carefully. I can have a range of cavity sizes between R min and R max which can become active at a particular superheat value. Okay. So, whether a particular site is going to become active is dependent on this solution of these two equations. So, when I have I just put this in words today and then we will uh, discuss this at a later time. Uh, minimum and maximum value. Of 2 R C by delta T. Y is nothing but 2 R C. Okay. Corresponding to. equilibrium bubble so only cavities within this limit will be Okay. So, two R C by delta T minimum less than or equal to two R C by delta T less than or equal to two R C by delta T maximum. So, this range of cavity sizes which are given by this and this maximum value would be the active size. Now, what we are trying to say is that means I will just draw this diagram, we will explain this little later. For this is can be derived actually cavity mouth radius. This is a log log scale. 1, 0 0.001, 0 0.001, 0 0.1 and T wall minus T set say up to 0, 2, 4, 6, 8 and 10. Just draw this, I will explain this next class. Delta T is about 0.2 mm for saturated water at P atmosphere. What has been found is that from Sue's analysis, this would be the region or the curves which are going to be active the sites which are going to be active exist between so there is a upper and lower bound which is going to be there so for this superheat say 3 degrees this would be the sizes which are going to be active for 8 degrees superheat this may be the size which is active so, what we are saying is there exists a range of size of cavities which will be active for a given situation and now you translate this to time with increasing time when the temperature becomes different the curve that you are talking about would be a different blue colored line. So, it will intersect the bubble radius at a different point which means a larger set of curves uh, uh, sites would become active because this point of intersection 1 and 3 would be different from this point of intersection. 
So, sizes which were not active this portion would now become active with different at different points of time. So, with increasing in time you will see larger and larger number of sites becoming active and therefore, what you see in real life what started as 1 or 2 or 3 points would become several points of active nucleation sites. So, next class what we will do is we will cover this within half an hour and that would pretty much end the fundamentals associated with the bubble nucleation so on and so forth.